Hi guys, my name's Yuan Day. Um, I don't usually make YouTube videos, but I thought that I'd make one for um, the dentistry process in getting into dental school. Um, I've only recently just started dental school and I remember when I was applying, I really wish that there was a video out there that helped me with the process and just other people who shared their experiences. So I just thought, why not, why just do one <laughs> and help you guys that are going into it now. Um, I know it can be a strenuous process, you have a lot of ups and downs, but hopefully I could try and talk you through it and calm you down a bit. So firstly, I'll tell you a bit about, a bit about myself, my grades, my background and stuff. Um, so for my GCSEs, I got a um, 5 A's, 5 A stars and 3 B's, which is sort of the grades you need if you want to do dentistry or medicine. Obviously you don't need exactly that, but you need sort of A's to C's or A's to B's if you um, want to get a, if you want to get admission from unis, because unis are really strict these days, they're really hard on people, they really want a um, they really look back at GCSEs, stuff like that. So try and start from early. If you're in secondary school now and you're thinking that you want to do dentistry or medicine, then really f focus on your GCSEs because a lot of people might tell you that they're not really important, that, oh my God, they're just GCSEs, um, um, whatever. But yeah, they are important. Do get good grades because literally the GCSEs are the basis, they're the foundation for everything. Because once you get your GCSEs, you do A-levels, you do your or you do IB and then you do go to uni and universities just want to know that you have that good foundation because I remember when I was applying they wanted you to have a A in maths or an A in English so those things are really important even if you just flop other things like German or random stuff that doesn't matter make sure you get good grades in your chemistry in your maths and English and obviously chemistry and biology um, yeah, I chose to do chemistry or biology. Obviously, if you want to do something medically re related, you need to like science. Um, so I done chemistry or biology. Um, yeah, um, <laughs> and um, for dentistry, I didn't always know that I wanted to do dentistry. Honestly, I didn't know since in secondary school or anything. I just knew that I really liked science and I really liked people. Um, and I was looking, and I wanted to have a sort of clinical based job anyway. And whilst I was looking around, I came across dentistry and I really liked it, you know what I mean? A, a lot of people might be like, oh, why would you want to look at teeth all day? But honestly, it's so much more than that. And yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to go into too much detail, but it became something that I really, really wanted to do. Um, and I could definitely see myself doing it and enjoying it. So when I got to sixth form, uh, I went to a, a school that done the International Baccalaureate. So, um, for those of you who are in the UK, you're probably familiar with the IB. Um, it's like, instead of A-levels, you do seven subjects instead of four. So for my highers, I done chemistry, biology and psychology. And for my standards, I done maths, German and English literature performance. Everybody has to do maths, everybody has to do um, a language and everybody has to do English. Yeah, IB was tough. <laughs> I don't know why, why I decided to do it. Do you know what I mean? It was just unnecessary stress, but it was really good for preparing me for uni. Um, it was something that I don't regret doing. I say that with <laughs> a bit of hope, but um, if I'm being honest, even though it was like so long, it was it was actually quite good. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah, for those of you who do IB, um, I know, sorry, going on a tangent, but for those of you who do IB, I know it's really difficult, but try get the hard stuff out of the way first. So stuff like extended essay and talk essay, um, try and get that out of the way and just really try and be on top of everything. Um, so goes, this goes to A-level students as well. I know it's really easy to say, oh, just be on top of everything. But if you want to do something like medicine or dentistry, you need to learn how to divide your time, learn how to um, just learn how to <laughs> learn how to do do things where they're needed to do. 
needed to be done. I'm not trying to give you a lecture or anything. Like I wasn't perfect student. Like I wasn't like, oh my god, I'm so clever. No. Um, I did go out, I did have fun as well, but make sure whilst you're having fun you also study as well. So it's sort of like work hard, play hard sort of thing. I'm not saying that if you want to do medicine then you have to be like a complete geek because I I wasn't like a complete nerd. Um, I was what I wanted to be but obviously I did have a social life as well. So just try and have a little bit of a balance. Um yeah um, and for interviews so okay obviously when you're applying to dentistry and medicine you need to write a personal statement make sure that your personal statement is very well rounded um, when you when teachers tell you they'll tell you to have a bit about um, why you want to do dentistry or medicine why you want to um, why, yeah, why you want to do dentistry, work experience that you've had in the past, um, a bit of extra stuff that you've done, and they also want to see that you're a well-rounded person as well, so include stuff about your hobbies. Um, they don't just want to see a personal statement that just is just bland, do you know what I mean? They want to know that there's a person in here as well. Um, and for the first round, um, I actually took a, ended up taking a gap year, but I'll talk about that in a bit. So for the first time I applied, I applied to Liverpool, Manchester, Bristol and um, Sheffield. I got an interview from Manchester and Liverpool and ended up getting two offers. Yay. <laughs> um, yeah, I was really happy about getting that. Um, for interviews, I advise you guys, I know everyone says it all the time, but literally just be yourself. Um, it goes a long way. I know everyone has different personalities and stuff, but they, literally, some of the things I didn't even know, know what <laughs> I didn't even know what I was saying half the time. <laughs> but as long as you say it with confidence, enthusiasm, and act like you know what we're talking about, you get by. Do you know what I mean? They just want to see someone who's enthusiastic about what what they're saying. Um, and even when they do ask you difficult questions, I know I have some ethical scenarios. Just put yourself in that situation and generally think about how you'd answer it. There's no sort of model perfect answer. Um, yeah, I think that's how I ended up getting two offers. I was quite chuffed to be honest. I didn't expect it, but I was happy. Um, also, uh, what was I gonna say? Don't be too downhearted about rejections. I I did get rejections. Um, everyone gets them. Like I know when you're applying for med for dentistry and medicine, everybody else around you is all getting offers from all their different subjects and they get their offers like that and you'll just be there waiting and waiting and waiting like oh my gosh when am I going to get one offer, let, let alone an offer, an interview, when am I going to get an interview, like literally it wasn't until December when I got my first interview and some people had theirs in like March, do you know what I mean? So it doesn't, don't, don't be too nervous about that, just your time will come like and I had my first my first thing from UCAS you know in UCAS it says something has changed in UCAS my first thing that I got was a rejection and oh my god I was literally in tears I was crying my friends will tell you like go all like I sent a picture to my friend of myself crying it's, it was so embarrassing but like it's it's deep getting a rejection but honestly I've learned to deal with rejection after that so don't let it get you down too much and once you've had an offer units that rejected you it's just their loss anyway um yes and also the uk cat so if, if you're doing um dentistry you need to do the uk cat um that test yeah it's an interesting one um not my favorite but i don't have to do it anyway um for advice of that there's not really past papers on on uk cat but there's this thing called Redify that I used that I found really helpful. Um, I'll leave the link below. It's just like an online question bank that has loads of questions that you can just practice on and, and just learn how to do it in time. Because the thing about UK Cat is all about being quick. Like there are some questions that I didn't even get to read, but you just have to learn how to do it systematically and learn how to skim read and stuff like that. So you skills that you acquire after practicing for a bit. So yeah, just really do practice because UK Cat is even though it's like an online computer test it's not easy it's actually not easy um yeah <laughs> well I'm so happy I don't have to do that again but yeah um for leads I had to do the BMAT as well um for those of you in America probably watching this that's equivalent to the entry test that you have to do 
um, I think in America it's called a DAT so you got this that's how the UK cat is like here um, yeah that doesn't really matter too much as long as you've got a good personal statement like you can literally get an okay UK cat score and still get an interview so don't be too worried if your UK cat score is not amazing like mine wasn't fantastic but um, I still got two interviews you know what I mean so you don't have to get a fantastic score um, mine was just all right you know um, so my gap year <sighs> so I ended up having to take a gap year because when I got my results I actually missed my chemistry and biology grade I missed chemistry by 1% and biology I ended up making some sh a stupid mistake I ended up accidentally missing out a whole 25 mark question I still to this day don't know how I didn't see it like I beat myself up all the time about it like it was just a horrible mistake but yes um, so the two into the two offers that I got went down the drain because I got um, at first I got 37 points in the IB altogether that's like equal to A, A, B in A levels or A, B, B I'm not sure but something like that and they wanted A, A, A like they were not flexible they were not having it like it was it was hard times like I'm not gonna lie it was it was hard because I knew that I worked hard and it was just <sighs> god like in that moment I tried to think back to how I felt like after I realized I made that mistake I was in tears like I just felt like just suck, being sucked up by the floor and just disappearing like I was so upset I thought I just threw it all away um, and the one percent as well was just like ah oh, gosh like why me why has this happened why does it have to happen to me like I, I really want this you know what I mean it was really hard so I had to make a decision about whether I wanted to go and do biomedical science because that was my insurance I had an insurance um, you get to get, get an insurance uni so I had Warwick to do biomedical science there but biomedical science wasn't something that I wanted to do you know what I mean I signed up for dentistry not biomedical science and I was thinking I wouldn't want to do a course where I wasn't that I wasn't wholeheartedly in it because whilst I was in that course I'll just be thinking I'll just be thinking about dentistry so I was about to go to Warwick just because it's such a good UD but I just realized that's that's not what I want to do biomedical science isn't something I want to do I want to do dentistry and it was a hard decision deciding to do a gap year and retake because the whole stigma around it like retaking it just makes you seem like a failure really and I really did care about what other people thought and she's mine. when all your friends are going to uni and you're still there oh my god she was so clever what happened do you know what I mean and it was just all I just didn't like that and I just felt really like down throughout that whole summer really really down but I, I'm good that I, it's good that I had a good support network of friends and family like my family didn't pressure me to anything at all they were literally like do whatever you want to do um my friends were telling me that if dentistry is what I want to do why not just take a year out like now that I've taken now that I took that gap year I'm so ha happy that I've done it because when you think about it a year is actually not that deep it's not it's just one year do you know? it seems like a lot when you haven't taken it because everybody else is going but it's not that bad like you're if you have to do one subject again you're not a failure just get that thought out of your mind you're not a failure because that's what I kept on thinking oh my god I thought no you're not like I got a reasonably good score but it was a good score like I always try and under I always put play myself down but it was a good score at the end of the day I didn't have to do the whole thing again it was just a mistake so it was just two subjects I had to do and um, I'd done it I, I had to swallow my pride I had to go down and the other year and do it again do the two subjects again but when the exams came I did do it I did pass and I did get I did get um, an offer again from Plymouth University to do dentistry and yeah it was one of the best decisions I ever made to take a gap year and if I had to do it again I would because over the gap year I got to work I got to um, do work experience at a dental practice it was just it was really good like and I'm happy that I've done it um, literally just take I just I, I, just, I would advise anyone who's ever in that situation just to take a risk you know like 
you never know what's going to happen. Like, it's better to it's better to not to not regret something. Because if I went to go do biomedical science, I knew I know that I would have definitely regretted it. So yeah, don't don't be put off by the idea of a gap year or doing something again. Like you can get to where you want to be. And my main message for this video was for anyone who's in that situation and just wanted to reach out to you or anyone like that that you can do it and it's not over if, even if you do have the grades and you, you're thinking about whether to reapply do it honestly now that I'm in uni there's so many people that have um, done all sorts of things some people are 25 and starting again in, and starting first year some people take took two gap years some people took three gap years like my one gap one, my one retail was nothing do you know what I mean some people have have done crazy things so just take those risks like you're not going to be the, um, the odd one out so many people have done different things but if you know dentistry is what you want to do then go for it honestly go for it there's there's no one actually stopping you no one's stopping you and yeah <laughs> sorry I'm getting really passionate about this because I just wish that I had, I had a lot um something like this to just tell me that it's going to be okay and now that I'm on the other side I'm I'm really happy that I've done it um, I'm in my first year now and I really like the course like it's it's really good like Plymouth is a really good dental school if anyone was applying there like um, the way they teach everything they have practicals as well we're, we're already starting to do things like drilling and polishing and stuff like that so yeah I just feel that everything did pay off um, yeah I think that, that's it for now and um, if you guys have any questions if you want any help with the UK cat, I've got my notes on the UK cat, um, especially on the um, shape section. I can send that to you. If you want me to answer any of your questions, do let me know. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, yeah. Um, hope this video helped you and have a good journey. <laughs> I wish you guys the best of luck. It's not easy to get in. Just yeah, believe in yourself. Have faith. Trust that you can do it and you'll get to where you need to be. All right, see ya.